So we'll go on to our next question, which is definitely related to this. Um, uh, it was a big question. Um, one of our good friends and students, Sydney, um, has been practicing asana via some YouTube videos, and they were specifically related to um, energy work and the chakras, and she was finding that when she finished these practices, her physical body was experiencing symptoms of anxiety. On top of this, she also read an article about uh, people um, having adverse effects to meditation and spiritual practices. And so she was asking us what we, we felt about this. Well. Yeah. I just, can I, I'm yeah. just going to say something right away that I read this article that Sydney shared and um, it started off with a man talking about driving down the road and kind of having this existential crisis while driving in his car. And when I first started to read the article, I thought, amazing, this is great. He's, he's having an awakening. Um, and then unfortunately, he, uh, I guess we could say, didn't have a teacher there or didn't have an understanding of what was happening to him. So he checked himself into a hospital and saw some doctors who described it as being uh, an adverse effect to meditation. So I thought that was really interesting. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I, um, I, I feel that for people who haven't uh, spent much time in silence or spending time with a teacher to explain some of the processes that one goes through in meditation, there can be a difficulty. And that difficulty arises because if, if suddenly you're if your whole life you've been busy, you've been external, you go to sleep with the TV on or you have to smoke weed before going to sleep, you know, using all these numbing devices to, uh, to separate you from, from what is actually happening inside. It's, I will admit that if somebody just sits down to meditate and they spend an hour meditating and, or they have a good podcast on of a meditation or something, then yeah, all these these problems can start to arise, which is why it's, it's been said many times in yogic literature and in tantric literature that we need to have a, it's a very good to have a competent teacher who can help us. In this day and age, we have a lot of podcasts, we have a lot of YouTube videos, we have a lot of things, explaining a lot of things, but the, the actual person sometimes isn't there that we can rely on to ask questions to. And taken from a purely Western standpoint, an awakening could be seen as sort of a, could be seen as a psychotic episode because it's misunderstood rather than being understood as to what it truly is, to what it truly points to. And like that man who's in the example of being in the car and having this awakening and then checking himself into a hospital, a teacher would be able to guide the person closer to truth rather than, rather than what a doctor would do, which only looks at the mind. Possibly doesn't, just frighten him back into his person. Yeah, frighten him back into his Deeper person. Deeper conditionings that will be harder to break later. Exactly. So. Yeah, meditation can lead to such things happening, but we also have to be well informed as well when we start to go deeper into meditation. And by the way, usually things like this don't happen very often. It's probably a one in a thousand or one in a hundred thousand that this happens. Usually people, when they sit down to meditation, they can't go into a space of emptiness or into a space of unconditional uh, perceiving. There's usually just a lot of thoughts happening. The mind is distracted, the body's distracted, can't sit still. At least I know that that's how it happened to, for me when I first started meditating 20 years ago. And okay, I had a teacher around, but when I started going deeper into meditation, I didn't have a teacher around, but I was very restless, very, very restless. So, so it was more of a process for me.
At the same time, though, um, like for example, we, we've had to sit with a lot of students, even myself in the beginning when I first came here, um, where we've had to sit with people as they have Kundalini rising, which can be um, very uncomfortable in, in, in when energy is very strong. It can feel like anxiety, it can be convulsions in the body, it can be uncontrollable laughter, it can be an endless amount of weird things happening in the body. And so, of course, that's going to look psychotic or um, it can make one feel nervous or uncomfortable um, without a competent teacher there, as, as Bardock mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, something else that I just wanted to add on this topic is energy work is something that really needs to be respected that I think is not being respected so much these days in that someone takes chakra workshop or they read a book on Anahata, the heart chakra, and then they teach other people. They, um, yeah, they, they teach a workshop, they tell their friends, they put YouTube videos online of, um, that are supposed to help open up chakras. For me and, and my limited understanding or my education within the chakra system in Kundalini, those videos that I watched um, that Sydney was using were not working on those chakras. And I would also add that energy needs to be respected so much that um, you really shouldn't be forcing anything unless under the guidance of a competent teacher. And even then, a competent teacher is really not going to try to push your kundalini. Um, if you are able to come to the ashram and you do get to participate in our practices, um, they're very gentle, meditative asanas to awaken certain chakras. Um, when we're really pushing like this, then we can, it's been known that you can bust a nadi or what is known as like an energy pathway within your body. Um, you can create um, uncomfortable feelings within the body because we shouldn't be forcing these things. As we mentioned, it's an unfolding and, and in that, that happens both in awakening and with Kundalini rising. If we're trying to make things open for ourselves, uh, we're just going to end up blocking or hurting ourselves. Yeah, the scriptures clearly state that wrong guidance uh, or practicing without a competent teacher can result in paralysis, madness, or death. So, so it's very serious that, that we respect work with energy. And so that means actually having a competent teacher. So how do you find a competent teacher in today's world? Well, that's a whole other question that we'll try to cover at some time. But um, definitely somebody who themselves have claimed at least to have had um, spiritual awakening. This is at least helpful. I would say also coming from authentic teachers, like yes. where have they learned, where have they studied, is, are those reputable schools. Um, but then in general, if unsure, just do a basic asana class, a basic meditation, mindfulness meditation, um, to be trying to do energy work online, it's just not really that possible. We, we've talked about doing the chakra readings online, and it's just not possible. You need to be able to feel the person. and. And we, we can't have that kind of connection um, through the internet. And even when we're teaching our yoga classes here, although very soft and gentle um, movements towards awakening certain chakras, we are still feeling the students in the room and, and feeling whether it is okay to, to keep opening or whether we need to rest in stillness for a little bit. Yeah, and so then not just as students, but also as teachers, if you are energy workers, to be, to be keeping in mind that this is um, something that we can be taking on karmically if we're trying to rush people to awaken things, trying to make them have spiritual experiences so that they'll like us or want to keep buying our products or whatever it might be. Um, yeah, energy work is a very serious thing and can uh, have a big impact on a person's being. Emotionally, physically, and mentally. 
possibly leading to death. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, I think we'll leave it there for today. Do you want to add anything more? Um, So we'll just finish by closing our eyes, taking some deep breaths. Relaxing our body, or just simply witnessing whatever's present here. Feeling grateful for taking this time to reflect to expand our understandings. Thank you for joining us, guys. See you again soon. <laughs>